Hello everyone! Today we're going to be talking about farming because, spoiler alert, we're playing a farm game. But a little more specifically, the farming skill here in Stardew Valley. Now, in my opinion, the farming skill is the most valuable of the skills because it's probably going to be your main source of income. And when properly applied, it can actually make you quite a bit of money and not occupy too much of your valuable time, so that can be used for other ventures like divorcing the town. There are several ways to gain experience and increase your farming level, the most common of which is simply harvesting the crops that have reached their harvestable stage. But experience can also be gained by taking care of your animals, if that's your thing, harvesting their goods, petting them, sharing them, whatever, you'll get experience that way, though not as much as you will with the crops. With that being said, different crops give you different experience. The parsnips that you start out with don't give you very much experience. Generally, the more valuable the crop is, the more experience you get. For example, the parsnips you start out with give you 8 experience per harvested parsnip, whereas cauliflower will give you 23 per harvest. That does factor into about equal numbers, being that the cauliflower takes about 3 times as long to grow, but gives you 3 times as much experience. When you begin your game, your farming skill is level 0. It can progress all the way through to level 10, which is very handy at that point because you can make all sorts of sprinklers and all sorts of things to help you out and make this whole experience a lot easier. But if you want to get to level 10 quickly, you'd better get planting because just to get to level 1, you need to harvest 13 parsnips to get the available experience. If you want to get all the way to level 10 just with parsnips, you're going to have to plant and harvest 1875 of these. Which might seem like a huge number, but it's really not. As you progress through a year or two, your crops will get bigger, the crops will get more valuable, give you more experience, get you there a lot faster. And as an added benefit of gaining levels, you'll get better proficiency with both your hoe and watering can. That basically means you use a little bit less energy every time you use it once you start leveling up and that actually makes a huge difference if you've got a lot of things to water. In my opinion, the best way to level up farming skill is to continually plant things, get your farming skill increased to the point where you can make sprinklers and then let the sprinklers do most of the work. You just have to plant and harvest at the appropriate times at that point. The experience comes really quickly after that. You hardly have to think about it. That's when you can start spending other time doing other things. And as I said, harvesting a single parsnip will get you 8 farming experience, and the interactions with the animal gets you 5 each. So if you were to pet this pig, that's 5 experience, and if you were to somehow milk this pig, that would be another 5 experience, so those two actions would be a little more than one parsnip. Animals aren't really going to be a huge source of experience for you, and you're not really going to be able to get them till later on in your adventure anyway, so focus on the farming first, that's your money maker. Now, for every time you level up, you'll be rewarded overnight with new things you can do. For example, I've leveled up to level 1 farming thanks to a few parsnips. I can now make a scarecrow, which are very essential. They keep crows away from root plants, put them in the middle of your crops, and no more crows. They have a radius of about 8 spaces, so they cover a big area. Also the fertilizer, that just means you'll get a lot more better quality crops. The basic fertilizer doesn't make an enormous difference, but it does make a difference. It's worth making. Two saps, make one fertilizer, do it every chance you get. At level 2 farming, we can now make a stone fence. You basically put those around the perimeter of your crops, keep some of the weeds and other things away. That's actually pretty helpful. If the weeds do get into your crops, they'll start destroying them overnight as they go. Actually can do a lot of damage, so make a fence and keep the wood and stones and debris away from your crops when you can. The further away they are, the less chance they have of getting to your crops. The mayonnaise machine simply turns eggs that you get from chickens into mayonnaise, which is an artisan good, it can be sold, it can be made into other things. The most important thing we have here is the first sprinkler you can make. It is very simple to make, one copper bar, one iron bar, you get that from mining, in the mines, no doubt, get some ore. This is the area it covers, it's quite simple, only 4 spaces, but that can make a huge difference, especially in the early game. Simply 10 sprinklers will water 40 crops, that means you don't have to do anything except plant and harvest it. Easy experience, sprinklers are the way to go. Also a cool trick is if you lay a piece of floor down in your field, you can then place a sprinkler on top of it, just like that, and then you can't hoe it up again. So if you're doing a lot of hoeing, you don't have to worry about knocking your sprinklers around again. That actually will save you a lot of time and trouble, especially if you have an upgraded hoe, which can hoe a large amount of space. At level 3 farming, which would take you 97 parsnips, we can make a bee house, speed grow, and a farmer's lunch. Now the farmer's lunch is a simple recipe, gives you health, energy, and increases your farming skill. Speed grow is pretty good, it makes your crops grow a little bit faster, so use that when you can. Do pay attention to how long the crops actually take to grow, sometimes you're not really saving yourself any time in trouble. The bee house is pretty useful. All you do is build it, the bees will continually produce honey, you don't really have to do anything after that except collect the honey. If you want, you can grow different flowers around the bee houses and they will make different kinds of honey which is worth more money or you can use it for different things. Really easy to do, easy money. 
163 power steps into your journey, we're at level 4 farming. Now we can make an iron fence, which is made out of iron ore obviously, which is a little bit more expensive but a little bit more durable than our previous fence. And the big thing to take away from level 4 farming is the preserves jar. It turns vegetables into pickles and fruits into jam. It essentially increases the value of whatever crop you have, which is always a good thing. Never hurts to have a few of these on your farm, just always have one going, throw the crops in there whenever they're empty. More money for basically doing nothing? Never a bad idea. They simply take 50 wood, 40 stone and 8 coal to make and you've probably been playing in the mines by now, so all those things should be readily available to you. And lastly we have the basic retaining soil. What that does is simply gives the water dirt a chance to retain its water into the next day. That is generally pretty useless for me because my crops are normally watered by sprinklers anyway so they automatically water themselves. I never bother with it and I recommend that you don't either, just use sprinklers. Even if a few spaces do manage to retain their water you still have to water the rest around them so it's not really going to make a huge difference. Now level 5 is where we have to make a choice. We choose either the rancher profession, which means animal products are worth 20% more, or the tiller profession, which means crops are worth 10% more. Personally, I'd recommend selecting one of these just based on your personal preference. Do you want to deal with animals more, or do you want to do crops more? I often pick the crops one more because I like the giant crops, I don't like to chase animals around all day because animals are stupid. It is worth noting that either one can make you quite a lot of money, but the crops are likely to make you more at least at this stage of the game. By level 6, we're up to 413 parsnips into our journey. We can now make hardwood fence, which is the most durable of all the fence. Obviously made out of hardwood if you haven't deduced that already. We can also make a cheese press, which turns milk from cows into cheese. Essentially this makes it more valuable, art isn't good, good for a few things. And the big one of course, quality sprinkler. These bad boys are a little bit more expensive to make, but they have a little more range on them. They actually water twice as much as the first sprinklers, a full 8 spaces and there's no space wasted around them, so you can place them in 8 rows and they will water everything except for the space they are on themselves. Once I'm able to make these, I often do make quite a few of them. They will increase your production quite a bit. They are made out of one gold bar, one iron bar, and one refined quartz bar, so have fun in the mines. I know I always do. Level 7 requires a 600 parsnips or equivalent experience from other crops. Now we can make a loom. Admittedly something I've never really used very much, it basically turns a sheep's wool into cloth, which is fairly quick and fairly valuable in itself, definitely something worth considering. Cloth is also pretty hard to find so it's definitely a good way to get it. And also quality retaining soil for those of us that haven't figured out how to make sprinklers yet. Level 8 requires a modest 863 parsnips and we get Pam's favorite item ever, the keg. The keg produces different things depending on what you put into it. For example, wheat produces beer, hops produces pale ale, fruit produces wines, vegetables produce juice, honey produces mead, and coffee produces coffee, surprisingly. The one thing to note from those is the wine. The wine can make you ridiculous amounts of money as it essentially triples the value of the crop you put into it, so if you make yourself a winery you can be very rich and very drunk. Also we can now make deluxe speed grow which can be pretty handy, it increases the growth rate of things by 25%, that's one quarter of the time off. The deluxe big grow can be very useful when doing things like ancient fruit, because you want them to mature as fast as possible, and if you use fertilizer instead, the fertilizer is going to wear out after a few harvests, so you just want to start making money sooner than later anyway. Use this big grow on things like ancient fruit. Of course, we can also make the oil maker now, which can make either truffle oil or oil depending on what you want to put into it. I don't often bother with these anyways, most people say if you put truffles in to make truffle oil it's really valuable. But if you're finding iridium quality truffles anyways, it actually decreases the value of them and it takes time to do, so I don't really see the benefit of that unless your foraging quality is pretty low. But generally by the time you have pigs producing truffles your foraging skill is going to be level 10, so I don't often worry about the oil maker and you probably shouldn't either. Basically what that does is if you put a fruit into it, it will give you seeds of that fruit a short time later of varying numbers. I only got one back, it will give you anywhere from 1 to 3, so that essentially multiplies your crop. This is how I built all my mega crops and fill my greenhouse with the rare crops, so anytime you have a rare crop, don't sell them, wait till you have a seed maker, multiply them, make lots of money, sell them once you have too many, more than you know what to do with, be a rich idiot like me. Level 9 also gives us access to quality fertilizer now, made out of 1 fish, 2 sap, or you can just buy it. That's what I always do, I buy it from Pierre, it's always worth the money because it makes your crop that much more valuable. Invest in that whenever you can, if you have enough money, you should as long as you're following my advice. It definitely takes a little bit more effort to have to lay the fertilizer down before you plant the crops on top of it, but it's always worth it, the money, the quality, do it. And also my pride and joy, the iridium sprinkler, made out of one gold bar, one iridium bar, and one battery pack. 
very expensive to make, but once you start producing these, the sky's the limit. Because they water an absurd 24 spaces around them, which looks like this. So as you can see by this point, you feel this is going to be mostly seeds, not very many sprinklers, and they all take care of themselves. All you've got to do, plant the seeds, wait for them to grow up, harvest them, sell them, put them into seed makers, put them into preserves jar, whatever you want to do with them, it's all really easy from this point. But we're still not at level 10 yet, are we? By now, if you've managed to plant 1875 parsnips, or whatever equivalent of other crops, you'll be at level 10 and you'll find yourself with yet another choice. So once again you find yourself with a choice. You can select artisan, which means that those goods, wine, cheese, oil, etc. are worth 40% more. Or the agriculturalist profession, which means all your crops grow 10% faster. At this point I generally do pick the artisan profession because I don't really care at this point if my crops grow 10% faster or not. I've always got another crop on the way. My greenhouse is usually full by this point, so I don't care about how fast they grow, they just keep producing. With the artisan perk, if you have some pigs producing iridium truffles, then you'll really be making some money. Again, the choice is yours. By this point, it's not really going to make a difference what you pick. You should be making lots of money, provided you have lots of these purple sprinklers going on, watering a whole bunch of your valuable seeds. The seed maker, by the way, is also a really good way to get the ancient seeds, which is definitely one of the most valuable seeds in the game. Each one of these will give you 43 experience in itself, which make them the third best for experience in the game, just behind Starfruit at 44 experience and the Sweet Gem Berry at 64. You have about a 1% chance of getting an ancient seed while sticking any other fruit into the seed maker. Every once in a while it will spit you out an ancient seed and from there just keep growing them, throwing them back in the seed maker until you have an army of ancient fruit. At that point you'll have a ridiculous amount of money and experience seeing as they produce every week once they're grown. So for example, once these ancient fruit are ready to harvest, like you see right here, they will give me 344 experience per week, just for these 8. So it's not hard to imagine, if you have a whole bunch of these going, you'll level up super quickly, make more money than you know what to do with. Well, that's level 10, but we still have some other choices we could have made, because my level 10 choices were based on my level 5 selection. So if I go back, change my level 5 profession, I will get different choices at level 10. So let's look at that. Here we are, back in time, just like magic. So level 5, I'm going to choose Rancher this time. Animal products worth 20% more. It's almost like I like those animals. Which means at level 10, we have different profession choices. The coop master befriend coop animals quicker and incubation time cut in half. That pertains to the coop, which makes chickens, rabbits, things like that. Or the shepherd, which means you befriend barn animals quicker and sheep produce wool faster. I personally would always go for the shepherd because the barn animals are more valuable. They produce truffles, they produce milk, they produce cheese, and I'm all about the money, but that just comes to whatever your preference is. If you like dealing with chickens and eggs more, do that one. If you like the barn animals, do that one. The choice is yours. Not really going to make a huge difference by this point. Because realistically, like I said, once you hit level 10 in either skill, you've probably got lots of money. These are just kind of for fun. Generally, my choices by this point are whatever's going to save me more time because I have a lot of money and I'm busy exploring other avenues in this game. Another really important thing to note pertaining to your farming experience is that crops you have to cut with your scythe don't give you any experience, so if you think you're going to get lots of experience from those, you're wrong. Only the ones you pick by hand give you experience. And like I said earlier, it's basically the more valuable crops that give you more experience. In spring, I always do cauliflower into strawberries, that's a really good experience line, and money. In summer, I'm all about them big melons, and I'll be doing ancient fruit if I can by that point depending on if I found any. Fall is cranberries, and winter hopefully is a greenhouse, but easier said than done. Another note, things like cranberries, they yield multiple berries per plant. You only get experience from the original berry off that plant, so don't try and factor that into your plans. Just because it gives you three cranberries, you'll only get experience for one of those that you pick. Still a good value, but keep that in mind. Okay, well I just thought it would be fun to go over some of the farming stuff, the experience, how to do it, my personal choices, all that stuff. I think I covered most of it. If I forgot anything, let me know. I'll try and put it in the comments or the description or something. I tend to miss a lot of things, so let me know. If you want to see more videos like this pertaining to the other skills or anything like that, also let me know in the comments, other video ideas, other games, whatever. Let me know as always. Other than that, hope you like this one. Thank you all for watching.